Cooking family recipes has always been really special to me because all it takes is one bite or one sip to immediately transport me to a place closer to my family, a place that's nostalgic and loving. Hi, I'm Christina Cho. I'm a cookbook author, and today we're gonna to be making chung fun with crispy mushrooms and garlic. It's a twist on a family classic, and I love it so much. It pairs wonderfully with a smoked honey penicillin made with Maker's Mark 46, which is a twist on a classic cocktail. I grew up in a restaurant family, so food has always played a really important part in showing how much we care about each other. Similar to Maker's Mark 46, which is a reimagined twist on a classic recipe, this recipe is a new and sort of exciting twist on a recipe that my dad would make for us growing up all the time. So this is chung fun, which are rice noodle rolls. You can often find them at an Asian grocery store. And most of the time they're still soft, maybe even a little warm from making them. But if you take them home and put them in the refrigerator, they're gonna firm up a little bit. I loved going to the Asian grocery stores with my parents and looking at all like the fun ingredients and snacks, of course. And I would always get excited when we would pick up chung fun because I knew that my dad would be making his famous pan fried chung fun as a snack later. So I cut these up into about one and a half inch pieces. You want them to be bite size. And there's a bunch of different rolls in here. So you wanna separate those a little bit, just like that. And we're gonna put them into a bowl and then toss them with a little bit of oil. It prevents them from sticking to each other when they cook. These have a really great texture. They're light, but they also have this really wonderful kind of chewiness quality to it, which is something I'm always looking for. And now your noodles won't stick to each other in the pan. So the next thing we're gonna do is prep our mushrooms. I love using these king oyster mushrooms. They have a really wonderful kind of meaty, satisfying texture. And instead of chopping them, we're gonna chop off the ends, but we are going to shred these mushrooms instead of cutting them up. And what happens when you shred them, so they're really easy to shred just by kind of splitting it in half like that. And they have kind of these fibers and you just wanna peel it apart into these little pieces like this. And what's great about this shape when you cook them is that you get these really thin edges at various ends and they get really crispy in the pan. So my dad's version did not include mushrooms. He was a very straightforward kind of cook and all he had in his chung fun uh, was the chung fun, some garlic, and then just a drizzle of oyster sauce. He just kept it really simple and it tastes really great that way. But I like this version. It feels a little bit more robust to have the mushrooms in here. I love mushrooms and it feels a little bit more like a complete meal when you add these into the mix. So our mushrooms are looking nice and shredded. And now we're gonna prep our aromatics. So we have some garlic and some green onions. For the green onions, these go on last and they're just gonna be a nice colorful garnish. My mom would always say that dinner isn't ready until you have a shower of green onions all over your food. So gotta have these. And we have three cloves of garlic here and I'm gonna just slice them thinly. I like the texture of the thinly sliced garlic chips as opposed to like a crispy minced garlic. But if you like it that way, you can do that instead. So just slice off that little end nub. And then with a sharp knife, you're gonna try and cut thin slices of garlic. And the garlic's gonna be the first thing that goes into the pan. And what it's gonna do is that the flavor of the garlic is going to infuse the oil, which will then be used to cook with the mushrooms. So all those flavors just kind of transfer over from ingredient to ingredient. So now everything's prepped and all we have to do now is cook. So I'm gonna be using a cast iron skillet here to cook everything. I'm very efficient. I only wanna wash one pan. And cast iron's really great because it will give the mushrooms a really nice sear and also the chung fun. It's gonna get a really nice golden kind of crispy texture once we're done cooking. It's gonna add a little bit of oil. Make sure everything's nicely coated. And give it a few moments to really properly warm up. You wanna make sure the pan's not too hot, otherwise your garlic is gonna burn. A nice gentle sizzle is what you should be hearing. And we're just gonna spread that out into a even layer. You want these to be a nice golden brown color. It should take about like four to five minutes, but everyone's pan's a little different. 
I'm using a fish spatula here because it's really nice and wide and it's really easy to kind of scoop everything out at one time. Just some of the smaller pieces are starting to crisp up. So you just wanna kind of make sure things are moving around, flip any bigger pieces to the other side so that they cook evenly. If you see any pieces like that that cooked really fast, just kind of take it out, put it into your bowl, and continue cooking the rest. And now the oil that's left in the pan has been infused with really wonderful garlic flavor, and it's the same oil that we're gonna cook our mushrooms in. So. The pan's nice and hot still, and we're just gonna add our mushrooms. Depending on the size of your pan, you might need to cook your mushrooms in a few batches because the key to crispy mushrooms is to not overcrowd the pan and also give the mushrooms quality time with the bottom of the pan. So you don't wanna disturb them too much. All I'm gonna do is just make sure that the mushrooms are spread out like that and just leave them alone for a couple minutes. Resist the urge to touch them. So it's been a few minutes and I'm just gonna check one of the mushrooms that has a really nice char on it. So now I'm just gonna kind of gently move these around a little bit. You can start to see some nice color on these mushrooms. So we're just flipping it so that the other side or whatever side it is has an opportunity to have some good contact with the pan. And I'm just gonna add a smidge more oil. Right here. Again, another toss, so. Just let those go for another couple more minutes until you start to see a nice deep golden brown color on the other side. So our mushrooms are looking really nice, deeply golden brown. The wispy edges are looking really crispy like that. I'm just gonna season it with a little bit of salt. Like that. Quick toss. And then transfer them to a little bowl because we're gonna cook our noodles next. In the same pan still, it's still hot. We're gonna add just a little bit more oil and we're gonna add our chung fun. So you wanna make sure to add this in a single layer too so that they don't stick to each other. We already coated them with some oil to help with that situation, but you really don't wanna crowd the pan. And just like the mushrooms, you wanna give them some quality time with the pan. So once they're in, avoid touching them for a couple minutes. You can check on the bottoms to see if they're starting to blister and get crispy, but give them some alone time. minutes and the other side's looking really nice and crispy. You get a little bit of charring. And now we're just gonna flip all of them so that the other side can get the same amount of crispiness. Ooh, that's a good one. So I think this chunk fun's ready to come out of the pan. Both sides are nice and crispy. And I'm just gonna pile them up on a platter for everyone to share. Honestly, I would just eat these plain. The flavor of the rice noodle with the char and a little bit of salt and garlic oil from the pan is already really, really delicious. Before we serve up the chung fun, let's make our smoked honey penicillin. We're gonna start off by adding half an inch of ginger and then we're gonna muddle it, get all those good ginger flavors out of there. Now we are gonna add three quarter parts of our smoked honey syrup. This was made by soaking smoked black tea, which gives it a really nice kind of like campfire flavor in water and then steeping that in honey. Then we're gonna add three quarter parts of fresh lemon juice, two parts of Maker's Mark 46. The Maker's Mark 46 in this cocktail has a one-of-a-kind finishing process that gives it a unique flavor profile. It's gonna pair so nicely with the chung fun and crispy mushrooms and garlic. For a final touch, we're just gonna add a little twist of lemon, get some of that zest on there, 
and around the rim. And there it is. That reminds me so much of my dad's version, except it just feels a little extra special with the mushrooms and the nutty tahini. It pairs so nicely with the smoked honey penicillin. Maker's Mark 46 has a really unique finishing process using French oak stave, which makes it much less bitter than other aged whiskeys. So it has a really smooth finish. The nice notes of warming spices and vanilla pair really nicely with the nutty tahini and that touch of sweetness from the hoisin. Thanks for watching. I hope you make these recipes. You can find them at food52.com.